Hello there, Taurus. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I hope this reading finds you well, and I hope that you have a burst of new energy. And so a lot of projects, a lot of things that you've been trying to push forward with and push uh, forward to move ahead with, uh, they might be a little bit at a standstill. So, you know, it's important to kind of like double check our work, uh, look over everything that we have submitted and especially look, um, allow time for the process to naturally unfold, okay? You guys are generally quite patient. But I feel uh, an energy of like impatience um, coming out in this spread a little bit, wanting to move things along, wanting to uh, wanting progress, wanting like contact, wanting communication. And so let things kind of naturally unfold. And then I feel like the second half of um, March 2020, the energy is going to flow a lot smoother. OK, um, when I was shuffling out this uh, reading, this spread, for, for this month's reading, um, I felt very tense. And um, the tenseness is like, it, it's it's not so much in, in the mind. I feel like it was like near the throat, like wanting to say something, but not knowing how to say it. Wanting to move things along, but not knowing when is the right time, not wanting to be pushy, not wanting to be impulsive. And, you know, it's like trying to find the, the balance between when to stop, when to go. And so I feel like there might be like a, a tense, a very tense energy that you're coping with. Um, you might be in a state where you are feeling like, what do I do? You know, like a state of unknown, a state of suspension, a state of... Um, discomfort even and so I just want to you know preface this reading by telling you that I feel like things are gonna you know naturally unfold and move along in the direction that you're hoping for there will be a lot more clarity um, coming in for the month the latter part of March 2020 so just hang in there okay um, one of the image that came out when I was shuffling this spread is um, I see like it's almost like a battle scene it's like it, it looks to me like you know the remnants of trench warfare um, it's a battleground it's very very muddy and I can't even tell if there are bodies thrown about or if it's just mud if it's just muck but there's like a pile of mud and then there's like a giant flag on top of that pile it's like um, the, the the flagpole is like stuck to the ground and there's a um, the flag is billowing and it's a white flag and the white flag is all about surrender okay it's all about like surrendering accepting and um when i saw this flag just billowing in the wind in the breeze in the aftermath of this um catastrophic you know battle or whatever you call it it's a situation where there's nothing is left and it needs to either be um, built up from the ground up, it needs to be revived, or it needs to just um, be accepted. And so when I saw the white flag in the midst of this gray, um, bleak looking landscape, I was thinking, you know, it's actually not so bad because it's a clean canvas. It's a clean slate for you to start something in. And overall, the, the whole, you know, flag billowing in the, the breeze, it just feels very peaceful, okay? And so what I'm seeing in this spread in contrast to that flag is I do see a clash when it comes to egos, okay? It's between you and another person. And uh, I feel like the, the energy might be a little bit mirrored you mirroring them, them mirroring your energy, you behave a certain way and so they in turn behave a, a specific way and vice versa. So it's like you did this so then I do that. It's very tit for tat. But then I also feel like there's no communication between you and this other person. And so I feel like everything is um, kind of like assumed but it's not really talked about. It's not really laid out bare and in the open. So everything is done in a very like presumptuous way that person seems very detached and so I'm going to keep my cool and also detach or you know what they don't seem like they're very interested in me so I'm just going to withdraw and focus on my other options or focus on myself 
Or the other day, they 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 seem like they were you know interested in somebody else. So I'm gonna play it cool and just retreat and give them their space. So it's very like the the energy is very mirrored, okay? And I feel like underneath the facade, behind like these um. So basically, I'm seeing two people kind of like mirroring and dancing around one another, and I feel like there's no for whatever reason there's no communication. Between you and that person, and so you're assuming things about them. They're assuming things about you, and you guys are acting or reacting in accordance with what you as assume about one another. But you don't have all the information. You don't have all the details. You don't know if what you're making assumptions about is reality. But you're you're looking at the way this person is behaving, and you're just like. I'm going to adjust my behavior based on what they're saying. So I feel like this this dance off or this you know dancing around each other has been happening for quite some time, and I feel like for many of you, it might have been you know the past three months, the past five months, the past six months, like the past year. And I feel like it was、um, it was tiring. That's what it feels like. And I keep feeling like the two of you have a lot. That you want to say to one another, you have a lot that you want to express to one another, and I do sense an overall sense of like you know wanting to connect again, wanting to communicate again, wanting to like have that closeness again. But for whatever reason, there has been some type of a an emotional divide, even a physical rift. Between two people, okay. And what you're dealing with right now, I don't feel like it's completely comfortable. That's what. That's why I felt like it was very tense, okay.、Um, so the card, first card out of the deck, is pretty much echoing the same theme, okay. So this is the hangman, and this is somebody who's bound up, tied up, and in a straitjacket, and unable to move. All the blood is rushing to his head, okay. And in this situation, it's like there's so much I want to get done. I want to free myself. I want to move forward. I want to move on, but I can't really make a move. I don't have all the answers. I don't have the evidence. I don't have clarity in order to either break away from a situation or have the clarity in order to react to a situation in a certain way. And so I feel like in a connection between you and another person. Um, one party feels very much tied up and bound, and not able to make a decision. And then I also feel like the other party is waiting. Okay, this person is in stagnation, and this person is waiting. They've got their binoculars. They're scanning the horizon, looking for signs of you, looking for communication, potentially even looking for contact. And I feel for many of you,、um, you want to reach out. You want to make your presence known. You want to communicate. You want to, you know,、um, you want to reconnect, and they want to reconnect too. But I feel, for whatever reason, they feel like you need to make a move, either because they've always made the move in the past, either because they have always been the one to reach out in the past. Um, you're dealing with someone who's very bold, who's very like、um, I, I don't I don't think that they are impulsive. I feel like they're very bold. They're very passionate. They're very driven. Whatever they want to do, they have just simply got up and do them. And you know, Taurus, you guys are very methodical. You guys like to take your time to mull things over, to you know, find the right time, find the right moment, find the right words. And so, in their eyes, they're feeling like you're keeping yourself stuck. In their eyes, you're not acting fast enough, and they're scanning the horizon for other opportunities out there. If you're amongst those opportunities, great. If not, they're not going to be putting their life on hold. So, even though the connection between the two of you is very phenomenal, I, I feel like there's a really, really strong connection here. But then I also feel like both people are very much guarded. Because of you know past hurts, because of the assumptions,、um, because of like miscommunication even, because of lack of communication, but there is definitely a longing here about two people wanting to reconnect, 
wanting to be in each other's lives again, wanting to swap stories, wanting to catch up, wanting to, you know, um, see what they're up to. And they likewise want the same things. They want to know what you're up to, what you're doing. Is there anything they can help you with? So I feel like this is a person that really cares about your well-being. And if it's a love interest, I do feel like they have expressed how they felt about you and you're probably wondering, you know, do I, do, do they still feel the same about me? They might have told you this, you know, months ago and you're just like, but do they still feel the same? Are their feelings still the same for me despite the rift, despite the lack of con constant communication? Um, they feel like you might be tied up in something, in some situation. I feel like this hangman is you. They feel like you might have been tied up in a situation and they would love it if they can help you out of it. They, they want to be of service. They want to know if there's anything they can do to help. They want to know if you're okay. And I feel like, you know, out of the, the sense of personal responsibility, you got yourself into this situation and you're just like, I want to get myself out. I want to be the, the one that gets himself or herself out of this situation so like i feel like you want to you want to be the one to you know get yourself out you, you i don't feel like you want anyone to help you you're, you're still buying your time you're still thinking about it you're still still trying to find like the the most expedient or even the uh, the least cumbersome way of getting yourself out of the situation some of you could be, you know, tied up in like finances, mar uh, like marriage and financial obligations that you can't really get yourself out of. And you're trying to move on with your life. You're trying to move to another person. But for whatever reason, things feel a little bit stuck. For others of you, I feel like you might be, this might be like a work situation where somebody is telling you, hey, here's a new job. Here's a way out. But I feel like you're contemplating everything that you would lose or everything that you would leave behind. And so you're not really making a move and you're not moving forward with this new venture. And either way, I just feel like this is very much, you know, I, I feel like it's a lot more relationship, interpersonal um, type of a reading. And so I feel like the both of you are trying to play it cool and the both of you are waiting for one another to kind of reach out, okay? Um, I feel like there's a little bit of guilt here from your end, Taurus. We have here the Nine of Swords, and the Nine of Swords is like, unable to sleep at night, you know? Um, having, oftentimes, it's like dealing with physical aches and pains Okay, some of you might physically be in a state where you're feeling under the weather, you're feeling like you're not able to get rested, you're feeling just unwell. You're feeling muscle aches and pains. It could be as a result of a flu. It could be as a result of like overexerting, like uh, working out too hard at the gym, pulling on muscles, things like that. But with this Nine of Swords, if, it's, if we're not talking about in the physical way, this can be like, Thinking about worst case scenarios, thinking about like, you know, replaying scenarios over and over and over again in our head. Like, did I say something wrong? Um, did I say something that could be misunderstood? Did I say something that could be misconstrued? Or did I make a fool out of myself? Did the person understand what I said? Did they get my message? Did they get my email? Did they get the phone call? Maybe there was, you know, um, signal interference and they never got my phone call. Maybe I should call them again. If I call them again, would it seem like I am too pushy or too readily available? So I feel like you have a million thoughts running through your head about a situation. And I feel that it's keeping you up at night. And when I mention there's a little bit of guilt here too, I just feel like you have been spending your time focusing on you and there's nothing wrong with that we all need to do that self-care is important and i feel like the other person might have reached out and if you have not received the message or if you have left the message on red and never responded um you might have felt like you missed the boat you might have felt like, oh, I should have responded or I wish, you know, I, I had responded. It seemed to me like there was something time sensitive. And now that it has 
the, the message was like read but never responded to now it's a little bit awkward having to you know reach out to this person or wanting to make this to, to reconnect with this person it just feels to me like you know missing a boat or like um, waiting for the right time or it's so belated that we don't know what to say we don't know how to segue in to a conversation we don't know how to make the how, how to reconnect we don't know what to say to reach out and to get the other person to respond so that's what it feels like to me I feel like whoever that was waiting on you to make a decision or to even reach out or to even communicate or to even respond to whatever messages they were sending to you I feel like they felt very hurt that's what it seems like to me I have this nine of cups which generally is a really really good card okay I usually think of this as like wish fulfillment kid in a candy store a bear with his pot of honey but um, in this sense it could be like a state where you are overindulging on something that is very rich or something that is really really good and overindulgence can take its toll on your body right on your digestive system um, you could like be overdosing like so for example this bear with this pot of honey it's like too much of a good thing getting a stomach ache feeling that sugar high and then that sugar crash and so I feel like the person that you're dealing with I feel like when you're interacting with them on a good day things can feel very phenomenally good for this person they can be on like cloud nine they really like you they really like this connection I feel like they really really like you and then for whatever reason when the communication stopped and I feel like I feel like it was stopped from your end for whatever reason you were tied up in other obligations you had other things that you had to deal with and so time passed and then they're wondering you know what happened why didn't they communicate and I feel like it left them in a state of despair okay I'm, I'm getting despair despair from this card where they feel very rejected they feel very unappreciated they feel a little bit stabbed in the heart it's got like a, a tree branch growing out of his chest and so I feel like you know for whatever reason this person feels very much like like they don't even know what happened and I feel that they're trying their best to move on with their lives being single, nine of pentacles, going about their life, taking care of their, their work, doing their jobs very diligently, um, you know, hanging out with their friends, like resuming their life and making things feel normal to them and not worrying so much and trying to, you know, kind of push the, the memories and the remnants of you to the back of their mind so that it doesn't affect them on a daily basis. And they're putting on a brave face, okay? And then I have like the Emperor and this is what I mean by you know um, it's a very ego driven type of energy where two people are kind of like we don't know where we stand with each other so much time has passed and two people are wondering like wanting to reconnect and then then wondering or maybe you know so-and-so is already in a relationship and you're probably thinking maybe so-and-so is already in a relationship and so there's a stalemate no one is really reaching out so the nine of pentacles this is someone who's very independent and they're single the emperor this is somebody who's in a relationship and so I feel like one or both of you could be in relationships or one person is now newly single and the other person is in a relationship so I feel like the sense of timing might be a little bit off in this union you guys were never single at the same time or you know you both have significant others that you were in uh, committed relationships with and I feel as if even if you're both single now it's really hard like so much time has passed so much has been um, said and done that is really hard to kind of like reconnect it's really hard to come back together I feel like they look at you as this nine of pentacles where you might be newly single and you're you know you're able to take care of yourself you are uh, you're looking very attractive and very good 
And with this emperor energy, this emperor, the emperor is very stubborn. He doesn't make decisions with his heart. He doesn't really talk about how he feels. This is a very solutions oriented type of a person. And this is somebody who makes practical decisions and they make really solid, good decisions, but they're very, very practical decisions. They're based in the real world and they, they just don't factor in, you know, the emotional aspect of decision making. And so what I'm feeling is you might be dealing with someone who is a little bit rigid, who is a little bit like, um, they're, they're very much by the book, by the rules, okay? And they're very like, it's about fairness. So I feel like, you know, if they reach out once and you reach out, then the next time they're going to reach out. If they reach out repeatedly three, four, five times and they don't really get a response from you, they're going to shut off that avenue of communication because they're all about fairness. And so I feel like there's a situation here where you both are kind of looking at each other, wanting to communicate, wanting to reach out, and you're dealing with somebody who is very, very, very prideful and who is very stubborn. And I also feel like in the past, they might have told you, you know, what they wanted. They might have told you what they expected from you. And for whatever reason, um, you heard what they were saying and you, it, it registered in your mind. But for whatever reason, I, I feel like it might have slipped your mind because there were many, many things that were on your mind that you were concerned about. And so whatever this person uh, said to you, as to their expectations, as to the things that they want, and in particular, the things that they want from you. Um, it didn't register, it, it didn't leave an imprint. And so I feel like you're going through, you know, that Rolodex in your mind. You're trying to recall the conversation, you're trying to recall the situation, you're trying to recall their words and what they said. Uh, specifically pertaining to communication, pertaining to the effort that they're putting in, pertaining to when they're going to withdraw, pertaining to what they wanted and expected from you. And I feel like these pieces of information might be slipping your mind. And I feel like in the month of March, you're going to be able to recover these bits and pieces of information that was very important. At the time, it might not have felt to be so dire or so important to you. And so it slipped your mind. And I feel that you're getting bits and pieces, flashbacks of this conversation, of what they said, of what they expected, and everything is going to start to make sense. And I feel like this is somebody who's very much, you know, I feel like by the book, they whatever they say, they mean. Okay, and I feel like this is not somebody who's duplicitous. They're not going to say one thing and do another. And so they have been nothing but consistent with the things that they say and the things that they do. And so what you're dealing with in terms of, you know, their behavior towards you right now in the aftermath of that, you're going to start to get bits and pieces of information to explain to you why they are behaving the way that they're behaving and it's going to start to make sense to you and I do see here um, there was a connection that was really really good okay like um, there's great chemistry we have the lovers and the lovers is kind of like you know that that really passionate chemistry um, that we don't find very often okay so this is kind of, I would say for me at least, it's like once in a lifetime, it, it's once in a blue moon, it, it comes, um, it, it rarely comes in the picture. So this is like meeting somebody for the very first time and you feel like your soul remembers one another. And this is like meeting somebody for the first time and then feeling very magnetically attracted to them. They might not be your usual type, they might not, you know, for example, if you have a type if you like, you know, t tall, dark, and handsome, this person might be a little bit outside of the norm. If you like, you know, whatever your your preference is, like even, you know, uh, light skin, light hair, light eyes, I feel like they're very different from you. So whatever it is, they're a little bit outside of your normal type. But for whatever reason, you find yourself very magnetically, like, attracted to them. 
And attraction is usually indicative of, of, of something a little bit deeper. It's like a, a soul connection. And so with this lover's card, I almost feel like for many of you, you're aware that this is something that, that is very precious. It is something that, you know, it's, um, it doesn't surface every year. It's once in a blue moon, it is very rare, and the connection is very real, and it's felt in a very visceral way, like you can't really deny this connection. And so, many of you might be shying away from it because it's, um, it's unexplainable, it's hard to explain, it's hard to make sense of it. And just based on the sheer fact that you don't know this person very well, it can feel a little bit overwhelming. But I do sense that there's this energy about the other person that they really want to pursue this connection. They're longing for contact. They're longing for communication. They're longing for you to reach out. And I also feel like you're thinking about them. You're trying to figure out how do I reconnect? What do I say? How do I approach it? How do I say something to make sure that they will respond? Because you don't want to just, you know, send out messages willy-nilly and have them not respond. You're trying to craft the ideal message in a way where they have no choice but to respond. And so I feel like you're, you're in the process of crafting something, creating something, trying to figure out, you know, how do I do the catch-all on sentence so that the other person is sure to respond and so I feel like they're waiting on you they're they're scoping to see what you're doing they're curious about what you're doing they're curious as to what you're up to they feel like there has been some massive changes within you and they're curious and I feel like they are concerned they do care about you so it's not just nosiness and curiosity I feel like they do have that 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 quality about them where they do care about you and they want to know what you're up to and they care about what you're up to and they care about what you have to say so whatever it is that you want to say I don't feel it has to be carefully crafted I don't feel like it has to come with strings attached I feel like just as long as you're open and honest this person is willing to reciprocate and answer you know and respond and 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 open up that channel of communication okay so the thing that I feel is really blocking the communication and we have the Emperor and the Devil and the Emperor and the Devil this is kind of like refusing to succumb to temptation okay this is like uh, once again I get a lot of um, like passion and chemistry that you have with, an, with another person and I feel like it's, it's really it's very strong between both parties and I feel like you're the one trying to wait it out. You're the one trying to, um, you know, deny how much of an impact it's having on you. And you're the one trying to play it cool. And you're the one trying to, like, not let your emotions, your feelings, your passion run away with you. Because you're still trying to figure this person out. And you're still having trouble trusting this person 100%. And then I also feel like there's ego and pride here too that might be hindering and affecting this uh, the communication in this relationship all along where two people are not really opening up and making assumptions about one another that might not be true, you know. So I don't feel like it's game playing. I feel like it's a mirroring energy and it's misunderstanding. And so let, let's just say, okay. You're, um, you, you have somebody that you're connected to, let's say, via Instagram. And uh, you're scrolling through the Instagram account and you're seeing them with, you know, uh, let's say you're attracted to a female and you see her taking pictures with a lot of male friends, right? Let's say she's a heterosexual female and she's taking a lot of pictures with male friends and you're just like, wow, she's, she gets around or wow, she has a lot of suitors or she's, so, she's flirtatious or she's talking to a lot of people. And so I feel like you you feel like, well, she doesn't need me. And then you start to detach. And you start to detach. You start to, um, to feel as if, you know what? She has so many suitors. I'm not going to be amongst one of those suitors. 
I'm not going to be the the one to you know follow her around. So I I feel a lot of it is like I want like you know giving somebody a taste of their medicine, but in a way where it's like it's all ego driven. It's it's very much about pride. It's about saving face. It's about not wanting to make a fool out of ourselves and making assumptions about the other person that might not be true. And then you later find out that oh, all of those guys that she was posting pictures with on Instagram, they're cousins and they're brothers and they're best friends, and you know they're they're people that are not she's not romantically linked up with. And so I feel like once again, this situation can be vice versa, and I do feel this mirroring energy, where the two of you, so you know, are, are doing the same thing to one another and making assumptions about one another that might not be true. Okay, so that's what I feel here with this devil energy. It's sort of like the thing that keeps you bound and tied, and a lot of it is stubbornness, refusing to apologize, refusing to admit when we make mistakes, refusing to kind of like let our guard down, refusing to just like soften up. Okay, so the message I feel that's coming across for you guys is, you know, that white flag. Okay. It's about acceptance. It's also about giving up, but not in a way that you think. Not about giving up on a connection. It's pretty much surrendering, surrendering to the experience, surrendering to the fact that I want to find out what's going on. I want some truce. Truce. It's more like a truce than anything. So when I said the word surrender. I was thinking, like, okay, let let's say, you have your troops, okay, because the emperor leads soldiers to battle, right? And、um, you have your troops, and if your troops have been kind of like decimated by、uh, an, an opposing troop, like an, a, a rival, and let's say you only have like a thousand men left, right? And you know they have fifty thousand, and there's no way a thousand men can overtake fifty thousand, and so you wave up that flag. Okay, because in the greater scheme of things, it's about doing the right thing for the men in your charge, right? Knowing that if you continue this war, the men that are that you're that you're entrusted to take care of, they're gonna get slaughtered. And so, in the spirit of doing the right thing, we're gonna wave our flag. We're gonna surrender. We're gonna reach some sort of a truce. So that our men can, you know, at the end of this, our men can potentially walk away with their lives intact. Okay, so it's about doing the right thing. And so what I feel here is, it is all about doing the right thing, looking at things from a different perspective, and kind of like dropping that ego and trying to, you know, find a way to communicate, to reach a resolution. To re- arrive at a truce, so that both sides can feel at peace again. So both sides can feel like can communicate again. So that channel of communication can open again. So that there is like a mutual understanding. All right. And then towards the end of the month, what we have here is the Temperance card and the Chariot card. Both of these cards are major Arcana cards, and it basically indicates to me. Things are flowing. The communication, like the the open channel of communication, is happening for you. Things are moving in the right direction. So even though if you have been, you know, with the other person, working at cross purposes with the other person, making these assumptions and you know, tit for tat, or even even like、um, assuming that they're dating other people, so then you detach and then you start dating other people and then you start posting pictures and things like that. Whatever it is that、um, you know these two people are doing when they're dancing around each other and not really addressing the issue, I feel like there's going to be an open channel of communication between the two of you where you start to kind of align yourself and start to work towards a common purpose and a common goal. I feel like emotions as well, open, honest. Sincere communication is going to come through. The Temperance card is all about patience, and it's all about you know like、um, it's not opening the floodgate, opening the dam. It's about opening the faucet, letting the trickle of water 
come in very, very slowly. It's like testing the water, feeling things out, gauging intentions, trying to understand like one step at a time. Uh, rather than opening the floodgate, okay? But I feel like there's going to be a, an emotional connection happening for you in the month of March. And it's going to make you feel really, really good. And it's going to answer a lot of questions about the other person's behavior, why they've been acting the way they have been. And even what you can do to get the open channel communications um, up and running again. And so there is going to be a resolution. And I feel like whatever has been keeping you stuck the opportunity is here to make amends to reconcile to finally realize that you both have been waiting on each other all along and you know make some amends okay like with one another and i feel like the energy is flowing in so mutually that the two of you do really miss one another and there's like great feelings and both parties feel really hurt and I, I just don't like it when when it's based on a misunderstanding, it's based on like miscommunication or it's based on communication that is sent but never responded to. And like, you know, these are very, very silly um, circumstances to keep people stuck in. So I feel like there's, it's like doing the right thing, being the bigger person and trying to remedy a situation before it goes further, like it, it gets more sour. And so I feel like there's reconciliation here and it's gonna be really great. And if anything, it's gonna clear up some communication for you guys, you and another person. And the two of you can kind of like work towards a common goal and to move the relationship along as well, okay? So I'm really glad to see this for you and um, Please just be patient, okay? The We're in the midst of Mercury retrograde, so the first two weeks is not going to be pretty for the month of March. And so try not to, you know, um, if, if you need, if like you're uh, communicating with someone, try to have conversations face to face rather than through text messages where you can't gauge tone and intention. And then if you like, it's, it's always better to over clarify and over explain than it is to leave things vague and, and you know, up for interpretation. So just don't assume the other person knows exactly what you mean. It is a really good time to explain your intentions, okay? So I will leave it at that, Taurus. I wish you all the best, okay? I have a link, um, well, I have two links now in the description box below. One is for a psychic out of California. She is phenomenal. If you're looking for spiritual guidance, I don't um, do private readings anymore, but I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. Her name is Bridget and she's based out of California and I also have a link in the description box below for an artist uh, she does like alcohol based paintings on a um, different medium and she is phenomenal and she has a website as well and uh, I recommend that you visit the website if you want to look at some artwork okay I will leave it at that uh, take care of yourself okay and I will talk to you guys soon bye bye